Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jonah. I am today. You're going to be talking before we get diving into anything, just want to say, please hop in the comments. Let us know if you can see us all right, if you can hear us all right. We want to make sure all the tech is good before we get going. And feel free to use the comments to ask any questions throughout the presentation. We'll be answering as many as we can during the presentation. And if not, we will have some time after the presentation to make sure we catch up with those. Also, if anything is moving fast or you have to get up away from the computer for a second, don't fret. None of this is disappearing. It'll all be available in the replay on the YouTube page and on the event page, and it'll be emailed to you as well if you signed up for the, if you RSVP to the event. I just wanted to say quick, uh, Food Media is saying it sounds like there's a little echo leaving. Would you mind muting when I'm talking? I think it's coming through yours. Food is it Media. better like this? Hello. Yes, that is so much better. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for calling that out. Those are the that's the reason we appreciate and ask you to say so. Uh, but proper Levin, how are you doing today? Pleasure to have you here. I'm fine, thank you. And it's always uh, great to be here um, with you guys as well. I uh, did this a uh, couple of times and uh, it's always good to be back. So, uh, yeah, great. Yeah, we love having you. And so, for everyone watching, we are going to be talking about social selling on LinkedIn, the three step method. And Lieben will reveal the tools and strategies to market and promote your products, services, and your business successfully on LinkedIn in a simple and easy three-step method. Little background, Lieben is a communication trainer, coach, and managing partner at Expert Academy. His passion is to help others to have one to have more success in business through prof through professional communication. He provides training, coaching, guidance for companies and individuals who want to reach their professional goals and strongly believes that through training and coaching, anyone can be an expert in their profession or field. I don't want what to take any pitch. more. <laughs> 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 well, I don't want to take up any more time leaving. So I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay. Thank you, Jonah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, social selling, that's, that's what we were, we will be talking about today. And um, I think LinkedIn is actually one of the best channels, one of the best platforms to do your social selling. And that is if you have a professional service or a, or a product that you want to market to other companies or professionals. So if you are like business to consumer, if you are targeting consumers, then maybe LinkedIn is not the right platform for you. But in the other cases, it really is. So let me start by um, sharing my screen. I have here my presentation. So there it is. So to begin with, um, the three-step methods for uh, social selling on LinkedIn, it's really very simple. I mean, LinkedIn, for people who are not familiar with the platform, it can um, be a little bit confusing, overwhelming um, even. And that's why a lot of people say, okay, that it, LinkedIn is not really for me. That is because they don't know the platform and its possibilities uh, very well. So in this course, in this uh, event, I will show you exactly the three steps that you can take, that you need to take if you want to be successful on LinkedIn. So, as Jonah explained, I'm a, a trainer and a, and a coach. A lot of my uh, trainings are um, live trainings. Uh, I do this. I, I do LinkedIn training on social selling, on professional use of LinkedIn for, you know, smaller and, and bigger groups, also um, online. And um, that's what I like. That's what I, um, that's where my passion is. Um, but of course... Um, now with the uh, pandemic, we start to, to work more and more online. And um, in fact, I created this course because um, a few years ago, I made this simple YouTube video um, on how to make a good LinkedIn profile. And um, this video was an enormous success. 
I have like over 700,000 views now and I got daily uh, requests and mails and people messaging me, how can you help me improve my profile? Please let me know how you do this or that. So it was impossible for me to answer all these questions. So what I did is make this um, teachable uh, uh, course, this online course, where I explain all the things you have to know about LinkedIn and how to use it to promote yourself, your product or your service. So um, back to the social selling, um, because there are actually more ways to do uh, selling. And that's one way is called calling. And uh, really, you know, picking up the phone or, you know, going to people and try to pitch, sell your product or your service. Now, the problem with that is that it has a very low conversion ratio. So here we see 0 0.5, which means that if you contact 1000 people, then five out of them will respond in a positive way. 995 of them will not respond at all maybe to what you have to offer. So that is a, a problematic because it takes a lot of time, a lot of energy to invest in that and the revenue will be, or the success ratio will be rather low. Second thing that we can do and, and which is more successful is direct messaging, sending emails and contacting people by sending texts, etc. So this has a higher conversion ratio, like 10%. Uh, but of course, there are also a um, number of problems because you have to have those email addresses of the people that you want to reach out to. Um, and also, in many cases, uh, you get filtered. Uh, you get in the spam filter or you have a secretary uh, or somebody else who will, filter, who will be filtering the messages for that important decision maker that you want to reach. So then you have all social platforms, which is a great way to market yourself and your product and your service. And we see that we have a better response there because those people are on those social media. They just see your message, they see your posts and they respond in a good way to that. You have a lot of positive reactions. So the best tool to do that actually is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is perfect for social selling, especially when you have a business to business offer. Now, let me explain a little bit more about what LinkedIn is and how you can use it. And I would like to do that by uh, showing you the use of social media worldwide, because we know and we see here on this uh, graphic that um, Facebook is actually the number one in terms of users, the number of users, followed by YouTube, and then Instagram, and only on the fourth place we have LinkedIn. Um, but that is not a problem. In fact, it's, uh, it's a good thing because on Facebook, we have this um, not so focused approach. You know, everybody is on Facebook, your grandmother, your, your little sister. I mean, a lot of people who are not really your target group. Um, YouTube is also great, but you have to invest in, you know, recording and video making and writing scripts, etc., etc., which is a, a lot of time investment. And then Instagram, well, you have some poss possibilities there, but it's not really like LinkedIn because LinkedIn is a professional business to business platform. It focuses only and, and merely on those business contacts. So the important decision makers in companies and enterprises, they will be on LinkedIn and they will be looking at your offer there. So also another advantage of LinkedIn is um, we all know that social media is uh, your, your message on social media. It doesn't last very long. When you post something uh, within a couple of hours, it gets snowed under by the uh, number of other messages that, that people post. So like Twitter, you have a very short lifespan there, 18 minutes. So within 18 minutes, it's practically gone. LinkedIn does a lot better. 
related to other social platforms because your message there stays approximately like two days in on the radar. I see personally when I post something on LinkedIn that after a week and sometimes after longer than a week, I still get reactions, likes, comments on those posts. That never happens on Facebook. On Facebook, it's like you post it and a day later, it's gone. So let's talk about the strength of LinkedIn and that is um, your network because it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. You can be an expert in your field, you can have the best product, your best service, but if other people around you, your target group, the professionals that you target, don't know you or don't know what you have to offer, then you have no chance of making the sale. So your network will be very important on the LinkedIn platform. So let's see what are the possibilities there. First thing is to expand your network. And you see there are 500 plus, and that means that um, that would be like the minimum. If you have like 500 connections or more, then you have the right leverage to take advantage of that network of those people uh, you know and who are connected to you. Second thing that you can do on LinkedIn is use it as um, an information base to do competitor analysis, for instance, or to see what's going on in your branch, in your niche, um, with the products and service that you have to offer. Job hunting, that's how it started out, but we will not talk about that uh, in this uh, session. Um, and if, in fact, it's also a marketplace to, product your, to promote your service or product. You can ha have access to almost anybody. In fact, anybody who and everybody who is online, who has a profile on LinkedIn, you can target those people. It's also a good way to enhance your uh, visibility, your branding, and to bring people to your blog or your website, your product page, uh, your landing page or whatever. So a lot of people think uh, LinkedIn, it's, it's boring. Yeah? It's only for big enterprises or, or companies. And I am just a web developer or, or maybe a, um, a content writer. So it's, it's not for me. And that's not really true. And in fact, I'm going to give you the example of somebody that I've been following on um, LinkedIn. Um, he's just self-employed. He, he has his own little you know, business. And um, he's also in a niche that you would not expect on LinkedIn. You would more expect it on Instagram maybe, but still he has had an enormous success and that's how I got to know him. And I'm talking about this person, Bert Dries, who is a Belgian guy. Uh, I didn't know him before. I just you know, saw him on LinkedIn because he posts about his work from time to time. And I got really interested in the way that he showed his work on LinkedIn. And that's when I decided to follow him. And if I would need him to make a design or to make uh, uh, some graphics or to make some artwork for me, for my business, I would certainly contact him because now I know he's an expert in his field. So he's a visual artist, a graphic designer. Um, he's very young. He, he started with his own business at 22. Um, he lives in Belgium and um, he's been self-employed for a couple of years, five years now. And after four, five or four or five years, he already works for big brands such as Coca-Cola, Mazda, Esso, MTV even. Um, and he has his own clothing line now. Uh, you see him with this uh, sweater with the angry bear on it. That's actually one of his own designs that he puts on those um, uh, pieces of clothing. And uh, a company asked him to launch uh, his own clothing line. And it's now available in 60 shops. And these are the things I just want to give you a few examples of the things that he posts on LinkedIn. For instance, here on the left side, you see a video 
of his um, creative uh, process. So here he has um, made a, a, a character, a drawing of the character of Walter White from Breaking Bad. Um, and you see him actually doing uh, uh, it in a time-lapse time video as you see him working on that, on that drawing, which is fascinating. On the right hand, you have another post that he did um, to show his work that he made for Gary V. I don't know if you know him. Gary is um, an influencer, is a business coach. He has, I think, millions of followers on, uh, on LinkedIn and on Instagram. He's very popular. And he was invited by Gary to make um, these images for him. And of course, we've been all affected by uh, the pandemic, by the COVID um, breakout. So what he did is put a little bit of humor in it with this Darth Vader uh, um, uh, image with the mask on it, the mask on the mask. Um, and also he reaches out to people um, who um, maybe were also affected by the COVID. Um, and he himself was also affected by him. He had a lot of business that was canceled because there were no budgets anymore. Um, so what he did, instead of just sitting around and doing nothing, he did this post on LinkedIn and he invited people to send or mail a, a, a profile picture to him and he would make a drawing of it and make like an avatar of it uh, just for free. And he had a huge response on it. So these are the things that he did um, to be successful in his job. And LinkedIn has made a big difference in that. So what is the, that method that you can use and that also Bert has used to be successful on LinkedIn? So here it is. It's a simple three-step method. And I call it the linked ink method. So I added a C to the, the logo of uh, LinkedIn. And it stands for three steps, I and C. The first step, the I, stands for identity. And that is actually the basis, that is the, the foundation of your success on LinkedIn. You have to go have a good profile, a clear, well-built profile, which will help you to spread that identity, to build your professional brand. That's the first step. Second step is the N, and that stands for networking. Build, it means building your network, expanding your network, reaching out to, to as many uh, potential customers as possible and having them in your network. We will see in this hour, in this event, three methods to expand your network in an easy way. And then the third letter is the C, and um, maybe that you can think of what it is, what, what would it be? Maybe if you know it, you can put it in the chat. Um, just let me know what you think that the, the, the letter C would stand for in this three-step process, in this three-step method. What do you think it is? Jonah, do you see people commenting in the, in the chat? Uh, there's a little delay there, so not yet. I can take okay. a guess. Yeah. So uh, if, if, Community? Community, yeah, it could be that. It's it's actually it's simple. It's, it's really simple. Uh, well, we got, okay, we got a few people coming in here. Natalie says contact. Contact, well, it's almost right. Francisca says content. Content, yes. Well ah. done. Yeah, good. <laughs> there we go. Spot on. Yeah, of course. You have to, well, the, the, the thing is that you can share uh, your content, and that will put you on the map, that will put you on the radar um, as an expert in your field, because people will see the evidence that you are good, that you have a good service, that you have a good product. Mm. So spreading content to those people in your network who will see that you are an authority and you are legit will make the three-step process complete. Makes so sense. let's dive into those three um, elements. And we start, of course, with your identity. So I used my professional LinkedIn profile here to explain the most important elements in your identity on LinkedIn. And the most important element is 
your profile picture. This means this, this may seem like, you know, a no brainer or very evident, but I see a lot of uh, profiles who actually have no profile picture or a bad one. So a profile picture will help you to get more views instead. In, in fact, you get 14 times more views with a good profile picture. That means 14 times more chances to meet the right people, to, you know, have, have the, the, the right target group in your uh, network. So this is absolutely very important. Also, the background image, which is, you know, the image, um, the banner behind you on your profile is also very important. And it's good to have an image that is related to your business or related to your product or your service so that people make the connection between you and what you have to offer. Yeah. So here I used an image with my brand on it. And then the third important element is the piece of text that comes below your name. And I call that the headline. Actually, think of it as um, the title of an, um, an ad, an advertisement. You know, it's uh, a piece of text that draws people in, that makes them want to click on your profile and read um, what you stand for. So this um, headline, this piece of text, um, you can customize that. Per default, LinkedIn will take your job title and put only your job title there. But you can, you can tweak that, you can you know, adjust that. So there are three important elements for your headline. First one is um, your job title. Plus, it's also important to incorporate the most important keywords that are related to your business or your service or your product in that job title. So in my case, it's communication trainer, coach, and partner. So these are important keywords that I want to be found for because people do um, uh, searches on LinkedIn. And when they do, they will look for people who can help them, of, for instance, a web designer or a, a content writer or a web developer or whatever. So if you have these keywords in your job title, in your headline, then your headline, your profile will rank higher, you know, will come first. So we obviously want that. Second part is your company name. Um, in my case, it's Expert Academy. If you are just self-employed and you have you operate under your own name, you don't need to have your company name, of course. But there is an advantage to having your company name in your headline. And there's the following. When people do searches, then what happens is they get a list with results with your profile picture, then your name, and then that headline or the first part of your headline next to it. So if they see your company name there, that has a lot of influence and creates a lot of trust and authority. So it's always a good idea to include your company name if you have one in the headline. And then the third piece of text is um, what I call the wow factor. Um, it's actually um, a kind of sentence, a kind of uh, slogan, or a kind of thing that explains to the people um, visiting what you stand for, what your added value is. So in my case, I just came up with something like, you know, helping people in their professional growth. Um, you can be creative with it um, and add something that they really understand what you stand for, what your business is, and how you can help those people. So um, I already told you that your profile picture is very important. And a lot of people feel like reluctant or don't feel very okay with them when they see themselves on, on, on a photograph. Um, they are too criticizing for themselves. And they think, oh no, you know, I don't really have good photograph of me, so I decide not to use one. And of course, that's a, a pity because it's a missed chance. 
because we know that 14 times more views with a good profile picture. But so how can you know if you have a good profile picture? Well, you could judge for yourself, but we are not well placed to do that. You could ask a friend or a relative, but the chances are that they will just, you know, don't want to hurt you and don't say, you know, your photo is not good. So there's another way to do that. And that is this tool. It's called photofeeler.com. It's a free online tool where professionals like you and me help you to score your picture. And they do that on the basis of three criteria. Uh, and that is your competence. That means how competent you look your likability, uh, so how uh, um, enthusiastic and how likable you are. And the third um, metric is how influential you look. So I did the test uh, for you on the platform. I just connected with my LinkedIn profile. The tool takes your photo and shows it to a number of people who can vote. And we see here that I'm relatively competent also, I have a good high score on influential, but my likability is like average. So the good thing is that you can do several tests with different pictures. So I also did that for you. And here you see the four tests that I did. Um, and um, actually, the left one came out the best the left picture, this one. You see, I have a high score on all three levels. Um, the second one is the one with the hat is my Facebook uh, or was my Facebook uh, profile picture. You see, not a good idea to use this one. It's not really professional. Um, actually, I was not a big fan of the left uh, photo and I didn't want to use it because I thought that the right one, the right hand one was the, the better version of me. But in fact, the the left picture had a high score on all three levels so i decided to go with that one so think about your profile and what you can improve and do you have a good profile picture do you have a good headline do you have the background image because these are the three most important elements of your profile so of course in my trainings I go through the profile of the people participating, uh, of the delegates. Um, I cannot do that with you, um, but there's somebody here in this uh, session, and that's Jonah. So I um, got his permission to um, look at his profile on LinkedIn. So here it is, um, Jonah. Here's your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Um, I made a screenshot of it. So good. Good profile picture. You have that great smile looking right in the, in the camera. You have the background image, which explains really well what you stand for, what your business is. Um, it's completely and immediately clear. Let's look at the headline. I think maybe there would be uh, some um, advantages still to, to make for you um, by adding maybe the wow factor or maybe incorporating a few more keywords that would be relevant or important to you. Um, but of course, the three most important keywords are there already, I think. Eh? Content producer, musician, educator. So um, as a question, like when you're saying to apply the wow factor, one of the problems is just that I'm listing things, but I'm, it's not very conversational if someone's reading that, that can you give me a little more example just to apply this idea? Like, how would you up the wow factor there? For you and in, in your case? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, um, I, I, I don't know in detail what, what your business is or, or how you want to promote yourself. But um, when I see all, all this, I, I'm, I'm just, you know, out of my head. I'm just improvising now. Mm -hmm. um, you could put maybe something like, um, I make you sound great, or I make mm -hmm. professionals um, make better audio productions or something like that. More, res more of a result. So someone 
Yes, right. I think yeah. the benefits uh, should be there. Uh, how you can help okay. people, how you can make things better or um, help people to achieve better results in your niche or in, in, your, in your business. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, awesome. That's, that's the idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, one thing that you could improve, um, Jonah, is your network. I see you have the number of uh, 56 connections. I just said that you really should aim for the 500 plus um, because then you have a lot more leverage. But I think maybe uh, LinkedIn is not really the platform that you're really active on. Maybe you're more active on Instagram or Facebook. Yeah, most honestly, mostly TikTok these days. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But uh, well, and with LinkedIn, it's I. This is I. This is why I was excited for this event because I mostly, until recently, have thought of it as a platform just for me to get contracts here and there. But there's so much more potential. So you're right. I haven't been giving it attention. Yeah, I think it's it's a great uh, platform for a, your building your, your image, your personal brand, your authority, um, because the, the big advantage is that all the decision makers are on LinkedIn. So if you mm. want to, you know, get new contracts, get new business, you know, sell your, your, your e-course or sell your product or your service, um, then that's really where you have to be because when we go on, on LinkedIn, we, go there, people go there with a professional focus. When they go on Instagram or Facebook or even on TikTok, it's more for, you know, amusement or to um, get information about our relatives or find recipes or, you know, to unwind and not so much to do business or to, to see business opportunities or see people who, ha who have to offer uh, interesting, you know, business deals to them. Mm. which is the case on LinkedIn. That's why I love this platform so much. It's really like this huge database of potential buyers um, who are focused on business and on getting, you know, uh, meeting new business partners and, and buying stuff. So mm. that's really where the huge potential is for, uh, for LinkedIn. So networking would be um, the thing that would be very re relevant for you. <laughs> and let's just go then to the uh, second step, which is after building your identity and making sure that every, everything looks good on your LinkedIn profile. Another reason why that's so important to have this identity well built is that LinkedIn sees how well your profile is, uh, is structured and built. And if all the important elements are there and then everything that you will do, like networking and producing, spreading content will affect that. Because if mm. your identity, if your profile is not well built, then um, LinkedIn will not um, promote your network opportunities and your content as much as if you had a, a good uh, identity, a good profile. So it hinders you not to have a well-built profile. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in your case, everything good. Let's see what we can do to expand our network. Now, in fact, um, when we look at your connection strategy or the, the strategy that you can follow, you can have like a quality or a quantity strategy. If you go for the quality strategy, then you only want to connect to people who are interesting for you uh, when you where you see an immediate benefit, like people who are uh, into audio or who want to hire a musician, um, mm -hmm. you know that kind of people. Um, on the other hand, if you want to go for the quantity uh, strategy, then you will accept almost anyone in your network. So a lot of people go for the first uh, strategy tactic. And that's to only accept people who are really immediately relevant to them. 
because they say, okay, uh, those other people, they will, will not buy from me anyway. So I don't have the right, right product for them or, you know, it's, it's, it's useless. Well, not really true because when you accept people who have not an immediate benefit for you, you never know. Maybe in their network, they will have mm. somebody who can be interested in your service or your product. Or they can become a fan of you and they can like your posts and uh, help you to spread your content. So it's not really a, a disadvantage to go for the quantity strategy. Mm. Of course, you have to have a good balance between right. the two, but um, don't be so exclusive. I mean, on Facebook or on other um, uh, platforms, you would be like more scrutinizing, but Facebook, LinkedIn is like a professional network. There's no personal information about you on that platform. So don't feel um, held back to connect to people that you don't know. Mm. So. That is important to um, to understand. There are also some red lights, of course, when you have the opportunity to connect to people. That is like competitors. It's really a decision you have to take. Do I want to connect to those or not? People with absolutely no value, with no incomplete profiles, who are outside of your region, um, uh, when you're only active in... in uh, in the US, people from Asia, uh, for instance, they will have no value for you. Mm. So these are some things to take into account. So three ways to expand your network. Um, and that is people you may know to search for profiles and LinkedIn groups. Now, never import your contacts. Uh, at some point, uh, LinkedIn can ask you to import your contacts. But don't do that because they will send out uh, uh, invitations to all those people and oh. you just don't want that. <laughs> so yeah. so uh, okay. it's not necessary to do that. Um, you have these three ways and that's more than enough to, to, know, to build and expand your network. Okay. So let's okay. look at those three um, uh, ways. And the first one is the people you may know. Now, from time to time, um, LinkedIn will show you some uh, examples of, of profiles that might be of interest to you. Maybe because you have a lot of mutual connections, maybe because they work in the same industry, maybe mm -hmm. because they went to the same schools, um, all of that. So these um, suggestions may or may not be relevant to you or may inspire you to connect to them. When you do that, it's always great to include like a personal message. So here in, in, I would connect to Stefan and I would send him like, hi, I'd like to add you to my professional network. Just a simple line. You don't have to give a whole explanation about yourself. That's not necessary. Uh, but just like this upfront way of saying, I would like to add you to my network is more than enough. Mm -hmm. And then you send it out and then hopefully, of course, they will accept. <laughs> right. Now, that is the easiest way to expand your network. Now, the second way is to search for profiles. And actually, that is the most interesting way because it's very powerful and there is no other network that offers you this possibility. No other platform, no other social media has this advanced search methods like they are offered on LinkedIn. Now, <clears throat> probably you know that you can have a free account on LinkedIn, but you can also have like a paid subscription. Um, then you have like a premium account and it costs maybe around 60 to $80, uh, depending on the type of uh, premium account that, you, that you're having. Um, but everything that I explain here and in my course is with the free version of LinkedIn. Hmm. Okay. Actually, I advise against having the premium account. Uh, I, I had one. I paid for it like a couple of months. If you want to ex explore it or try it, in most cases, uh, LinkedIn will offer you from time to time the opportunity to have a free month 
uh, to test it. Of course, then you have to cancel before the end of the right. month right. because otherwise uh, you have the, the subscription and you pay for it, but it's not really necessary. So this advanced search would be available only for the premium subscriptions, but it's also there when you have a free account, but it's hidden a little bit. They ah. just hid it so that it wouldn't be not so obvious to you, um, but it is there. So when you have this advanced search, uh, the interesting thing is that you have more filters, you have more you know, parameters to search for. So let's say that you are a web developer, um, or let's say that uh, you, yeah, let's say that you are a web developer and your um, clients would be IT professionals, like IT buyers or maybe marketing managers. So then you can look on LinkedIn for people um, with the title, the job title, marketing manager or web developer. You can even restrict your search by adding locations. If you are operating in Spain, you can only look for um, marketing managers and IT uh, managers in Spain who would be interested in your, or even in a, a city. You can you know, narrow it down to the area where you live or where you are operating. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you can look for specific people who have a certain position in a, a, a certain industry or a niche, like in banking or in the oil industry or whatever. So you can really have these very targeted searches, which brings up a list of people who are your potential buyers or people who would be interested in your product or service. Mm. Okay, so let me give you um, an example. So I am uh, in training and coaching. So people um, who are interesting to, in, to me are people who are in HR or who work in learning and development. So I did hear this search for people based in the US. Let's imagine that I see it big and I want to expand my business to the US. Um, I have here a list of 373,000 results all people working in HR with the title HR or learning and development and their job title in their headline um, living in, um, in the USA. So, of course, this is amazing, but 300,000 plus results is a maybe a too big a list to be actionable. So I would narrow it down and I would say, where is the money of, let's say, people who work in a, in, in, in bank? You know, we have an HR function or learning and development function in banking. So I can narrow my search down to people working in the banking industry. And then I have like 5,500 results, which is much more targeted and more, much more actionable. Mm -hmm. So these are the ways to expand your network because now you can click on all those profiles see whether there's a match, whether it would be interesting, and then ask those people to connect to you, maybe send them a message, or maybe, you know, introduce yourself. And that's how you can really expand your network with targeted, valuable people. Hmm. Okay, so that is the, the second way to, uh, to expand your network. Now, um, the third way would be to be part of LinkedIn groups. Just like on Facebook, uh, you have groups on LinkedIn. Um, and these are groups about almost anything. Uh, everything related to business, uh, you have a group of. Like you can have groups about uh, web design, you can have groups about buying, you can have groups about uh, uh, making music, um, whatever. But anything related to uh, your profession or to business. So a good thing, uh, like here I have typed in web design. I did a search on groups uh, because you can also do a specific search for groups. And there you have 7,000 plus groups who are dealing with 
web design. Now, the very important and interesting thing about this is that um, the first group here in this list has uh, 203,000 members. So in those members, there will be people working in uh, web design, but also people who are interested in buying, you know, web design services. So it's a great way to see what's happening there, to see who's member of those groups, because once you are have access to a group, you can also see who's a member of that group. And there you also can find some, you know, interesting contacts um, to add to your network. And that's also a great way to expand, to build your network. So which groups would be of interest to you? Well, um, it's always a good idea to look at your existing contacts and see what groups they are member of, or to look at uh, your competitors or uh, your customers. Um, just look them up on LinkedIn, click on their profile, scroll to the bottom, and there you will see what groups they are a member of. So that can be some inspiration of what groups would be valuable to you. So this is also a great way to, uh, to expand your network. So um, I don't know if there are any questions now that we have from the audience, maybe uh, before we go to the second or the, the third uh, step. We did have Natalie asking uh, with the industry filter where it was, if it was only on premium. And I'm pretty sure it's a little hidden, like you said, but if you just click the all filters in a search, you get a whole bunch of extra filters there. Am I correct? Yes, that's correct. You just have to click that button, all uh, filters. Um, in the course, I, I, I explain exactly um, how to do it and how to use the different filters. You can also use operators like OR. Um, so mm -hmm. then you can search for oh. people who have uh, the job title, uh, maybe um, HR or uh, learning and development. So then you will get the combined results of, of those two keywords. Um, so there's really a lot of um, uh, possibilities and potential uh, there. And then, it, so my only question there was, even if you're going for quantity, right? You don't just want to like, like if I if I go and search audio engineer and put zero filters on there, I get two hundred thousand people. It yeah. does. Even if I'm going for quantity, though, it still makes sense to reduce a little bit, right? Of like course. to look for people in the United States, and then do you still just recommend once? Once you get a smaller focus group, say I'm just concerned with LA and New York audio engineers, because that's where I think the money is. Those are the people who would buy my product. Do I just, is it then you just connect with everybody? Because why not? Yeah, well, the, the best tactic is to just uh, click on the, the profiles. Mm -hmm. And then you actually are having a profile view Mm -hmm. What will happen is those people will see that you visited their profile. And of course, when you see that, you will be curious, who is that Jonah? Why is he looking at my profile? So we'll, they will come back and look at your profile. And then when they see a match, when they see that you might be interesting to them, they probably will send a connection invite to you without you having to do the effort. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you that's cool. So you can just, you're piquing their interest, you're letting them know, like you're curious in their products and if they're on their game, they'll come back and reciprocate in that way. Yeah, uh, of course, when you have like 3,000, 5,000 results, that will take you a lot of clicking. Um, but there is in the course, I explain a tool. Um, I, I will not go into detail here, um, that will help you to do that. It's a free tool that you can use that will actually um, help you to um, engage with those people in that search result that you have made. Um, and without having too much effort, they will come back 
look at your profile. When they see there's a match, they will send you an invite. I mm -hmm. use this method now. I do that uh, maybe three times a week. And per week, I get like 10 connection um, requests just like that from people in my target group mm. every week. That's awesome. Yeah, wow. it's 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 so simple. And like I said, there are, you can be overwhelmed with all the possibilities and the, the, the buttons on LinkedIn, but it's really very, very simple the things that you have to do or need to do to be successful. Right. And uh, I just, I leave out all the clutter and focus on only the important things that will help you to be successful and advance uh, your business on LinkedIn. Awesome. Well, and so this is a great question. I don't want to let it go from uh, Andrea, Andrea Glass. She asks, how do you suggest we communicate in groups since they have so many selling, like no selling rules? Yeah, I know. The best thing is to just be a member um, of those groups. Um, I also um, switch off all you know, mail communication because sometimes they will send you updates about what's happening in those groups and you can get a lot of mails uh, uh, out of that. So I just switch that off. And from time to time, I, contrib I contribute to, uh, to the groups just by um, giving a tip. For instance, my, my niche, my branch is, uh, you know, education, is training, coaching. So then I would say, um, how can you be more productive as a um, businessman or uh, in, in, your, in your business? Well, I give some time management tips. You can do this, 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 like five tips. And I'm not selling, so I'm not really selling, uh, but I'm inspiring people. I'm showing them that I know a lot about my, my field, my, my, uh, my business, my niche. And then when you do that more regularly, they will see that when they need your service, you are the person to contact because mm -hmm. you've proven to them that you, that you have the, the knowledge, that you have the expertise, that you have the authority, and they will think of you because they see you from time to time on their radar. Right. Which brings us now, in fact, to the, the last uh, step, uh, in the in the method and that's the content so once mm -hmm. you have your identity well built you have a big network so you can spread that content and more people will see it because you have more people in your network then you can start spreading building posting content of course that last step is the most difficult and the more most intense one um, but there are a lot of um, advantages to it because it doesn't matter how good you are, you have to stand out, you have to be visible. And you can do that by sharing, you know, valuable content, like really not just some sales pitch or, hey, here's my product or here's my promotion, but really by helping people, by showing them that you know your business and by sharing valuable information like tips and tricks on how they can make their life better easier or build their business or you know save money or whatever the benefit is that you can bring to them so there when you go to the home page of linkedin you see at the top this window where you can start a post and uh, it's really like on facebook you just type some text you can add a photo or a video you can even make an event of it um, but there is also a second possibility, and that's the second arrow pointing up, and that's writing an article. Now, writing an article is an other way of sharing content on uh, LinkedIn, and also that is unique for LinkedIn. Facebook does not have it, and any other platform does not have it. Um, and writing an article is a way of sharing more content. For instance, if you share a post, that would be like a small text, like two or three lines, and then one photo, or maybe more, and one video. Um, but when you write an article on LinkedIn, you can make like a very long form post of it. 
you can have up to 10,000 10, characters in it. So that's a lot of words. Um, you can have um, um, text in bold, bullet points, underlined, italics. So you can have um, advanced formatting uh, possibilities. You can add more pictures and you can um, make them like in a blog article. You can add videos, you can add several external links. Um, so you can make this very well layouted blog post of it. And an extra advantage of it, when you have a normal post, you know, it kind of disappears after a certain time, but your articles always stay visible in your profile and also on the article page. When they see one article, they scroll to the bottom and there they see uh, links to your other articles that you have written in the past. So it's like having an, an extra blog, um, maybe on your website, you can have that also on LinkedIn. So when you have like more information to share, you can write an article about it. So what can you, you share? What content is there to share for you? Well, of course, anything that is on your website, like information or articles or things about your product or service, but also some interesting topics that you find on other sites or blogs or news sites, but which have to do with your business or with your niche, with your industry that shows people that you are like on top of things that you know what you're talking about, what's going on. Um, videos is also a good way to uh, share content. If you have a video on YouTube, you can just share the link. The preview will come up and that's also a good way of uh, sharing content. Presentations, white papers, you can upload PDFs, which are uh, scrollable in the platform. Quotes, infographics always work well, um, insights. And you can also share polls or surveys and ask questions to the audience. Now, uh, LinkedIn also incorporated a very easy to use tool where you can create your own poll. Um, and it's, it's working really well. I will give you an example. So we also make this kind of um, uh, manuals about our training programs. And here we were um, developing our time management book, um, handbook, and our designer made some suggestions for the cover. Um, so we had those different designs and we were like <clears throat> hesitating between uh, two designs, the, the left one and the right one, the green or the red one. Um, so what I did is I made a screenshot of the two designs I posted the image on LinkedIn and I asked my network, listen, people, I need your help. Can you let me know which cover would you like best, which would work best for you and why? I got 52 reactions. So people who actually took the effort to make a comment um, and saying, oh, I like this one best or I like that one best. And also what... By doing this uh, post, I got messages from people asking me, oh, how interesting, where can I get this book? How can I buy it? Is it uh, offered in the course? How does it work? So without being overly salesy or overly promotional, I got this really nice post, which had the same effect. So the content that you bring should be valuable without being too overly promoting. Now, another example is um, the videos. We have from time to time uh, just some talking videos with our experts, with our trainers. And here, uh, my colleague uh, Jerko, Jerko Bozikovic, um, made this small video, like two, three, three minutes video on uh, stress, how to deal with stress. And he gives like three or four tips in it, how to, you know, relieve uh, your stress. And um, I shared this uh, video on, uh, on, on LinkedIn. It's also a good way to share your content, to share your expertise, your knowledge, uh, without giving away too much and putting yourself on the radar 
as an expert in your field. Um, and what also works very good is to include pictures of yourself because people relate to you as you who stands for your business. Uh, so we have these little cards, live, love, learn. Um, and I said, okay, if you want to have one of those postcards, I can send it to you. Just post a comment and, and uh, like this uh, image and I will reach out to you. So you can see 178 comments uh, just on this, you know, very simple uh, picture that I made with my iPhone. It's just a selfie. Um, but this is a type of content that people respond very well to. So, of course, it's important to have a content strategy. Just don't do, you know, things at random. Uh, look at your target group. Who is your niche? Who are the people you want to reach? Uh, think of what you want to have as a result. What are your objectives? Is it to be more, uh, um, have a more Im better image, to have more brand awareness? Is it to have sales? Is it to um, reach out to prospects? Is it to have better uh, relationships with your existing customers? Try to pick a focus there. Then define your metrics and what, how will you measure your success and uh, outline your strategy. And it starts with a content calendar because without a content calendar, I made one for myself and it doesn't have to be very complicated. It's just a simple word document where I have per week, I just have like week one, week two, et cetera, et cetera. And then in the second column, I have my subject. And then in the third column, I have like a summary of the, the text I will put, the image that I will use or the video and some hashtags or, or keywords that I will highlight. Yeah, and that's it. I do it on a rainy Sunday afternoon and I plan ahead like, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe 10 weeks ahead. So I have all this um, content and there's also a good, you know, thread in it. So it's really clear about what I will post when. And the fifth step in your strategy should be to measure your results. Um, how many views, uh, how many likes, how many comments, who has commented on your post. You can see all that on the platform. It's really very easy to use. In fact, um, LinkedIn will help you to show how successful you are because they have like a social selling index, which will show you how successful you are with your activities on LinkedIn. And you get a score out of 100. You can see my score here is 73. Now, um, that's a high score because um, when you do this test, you will see that maybe you will have a lower score. You really have to do a lot of effort to have a high score. And you see that there's a breakdown into four categories, which shows you exactly where you can improve. The first category here, the yellow one, is uh, how well you establish your brand. That's your identity, how well built your profile is. The second one, the purple, is how well you connect to people how many searches you do on uh, LinkedIn, those advanced searches. The third category, the, the red uh, line, is um, how, how much posts you make, how much content you share. You see, I have a lot of potential there, uh, even for me. Uh, I should maybe be more active doing that. And the last one is uh, how big your network is, how many people you have in your network. And I have the... the a perfect score on that one. So um, that is easy in, uh, in my case. So this is really the three simple uh, step methods. Uh, identity, build your identity because that's the basis of uh, your uh, success on LinkedIn. Then building your network, having as much people as you know, as you can in your network, building connections and then posting valuable content that will put you on the radar 
as an expert, as an authority, as a thought leader in your field. So people will think of you when they need your product or your service, and they will reach out to you um, with business proposals or with, uh, with offers. Now, um, maybe one more important thing to conclude is when you take the course, there's also a free review of your profile included. So at the end of the course, you will have the possibility to share your LinkedIn, uh, the profile link to me. I will have a look at it and give you some recommendations on how to improve, how to make your LinkedIn profile uh, better. So, well, this is it, um, Jonah. Yeah. I don't know if there are any more questions at this time. We did have a, one more question from Natalie here um, before we kind of wrap up for the day, which was just, you know, and very relevant on any social platform. How often are you posting? How often should you post? Okay. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so I... I, on, on Facebook, I recommend like three times per day mm -hmm. you know, if you have a professional business page there. Um, on LinkedIn, it is three times a week. Okay. Yeah, but that's so, a minimum. Yeah, so that would be a good, good pace because you know that your content will be on the radar for like two days. Right. So if you post like three times a week, that's almost like every two days so you always have some new message some new posts um being visible the thing right. is if you post too much then you will cannibalize on your previous post because right. once you have your new post linkedin the algorithm will draw all the attention to the to the new one and it will drop the previous one so right. you don't want to have that of course right uh and then it we're getting some more questions in here. So if we got the time. Uh, of course, yeah. Andrea is asking, where do you find that social selling dashboard you were talking about that you were just showing okay. us? Yeah. Um, there's a link. I can, can I put it in the chat? You can, or if you put it in our private chat, I can drop it in and it'll be clickable for everybody. Okay. Make so it easy let me them. just type it. LinkedIn.com slash sales. Here you go. Awesome. So, Andrea, I'm dropping that in right now. Should be able to click that and use it. And then um, Mick was asking, will everyone see my content? Oh, hi, Mick. How are you? Actually, I'm very glad that Mick is, uh, is there because um, I learned a lot from him. He's a colleague, trainer in uh, LinkedIn and social media. Actually, he also works for Expert Academy as a, as a oh, trainer. So, awesome. Um, it's good to have a fan, but I'm so, also a fan of, uh, of Mick. Uh, hey. Absolutely. Yeah. So will everyone see my content? No, of course not. Uh, <laughs> let's say, and, and I think Mick knows the answer. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... Let's say you have a thousand uh, connections on LinkedIn. Uh, on average, I think maybe 20 or 30 percent of those followers or of those connections will actually see your post. Mm. Okay. Why is that? Because LinkedIn filters and the algorithm um, decides whether your content is valuable or not. And they will look at your content um, in the first hours maybe a day to see how much interaction is coming on it. If you have a lot of likes and views in the first hours, yeah, LinkedIn will say, oh, this is valuable content. I will show it to more people in the network and maybe even outside your network. If you don't have a lot of interaction in those first hours, then it will you know, silently die. Uh. And maybe only 10 or 20 percent of your connections of your followers will will see it okay and it's actually more or less the same with facebook uh, right. i think it's even harder there to uh, to reach your full potential right right they 
None. I don't think any of the social media platforms are showing everything you post to everyone who follows you. That's <laughs> no, that's correct. And it also depends whether, because you can also, I didn't talk about that um, in this session, but you can also have a company page on LinkedIn and post things on your company page, or you can post it on your personal profile. Mm. So there's a difference there as well. Things that you post on your company page will likely not have that reach that you will have on if you post in your on your person or under your personal profile because linkedin thinks um well everything that you post on your company page is like pro promotional because it's for your business and what you post on your pro personal profile is less promotional huh. so they will get more uh traction to to those posts Okay. Okay. Well, Levin, that's all the questions we have at the moment. I just want to make sure everyone knows for everyone watching, you can access Levin's course. It is the link is pinned in the comments. It's in the description. It'll also be emailed to you if you are SVP'd for the event. And Levin, would you talk just a little bit? We've addressed a lot of what your course does, but are there any other perks or discounts or anything to your course that you want to mention before we wrap up today? I think there is a, a, a discount uh, included when they follow the link here on, mm -hmm. on, uh, on the platform. Um, I don't know exactly how, how, how much it is, but yeah, you will see it when you, when you click on it. Um, like I said, there is a lot of more, a lot more content in the course than um, I had here in this one hour. Uh, I could uh, explain a lot more uh, about LinkedIn and how you can use it to your advantage and also the pitfalls you have to avoid because a lot of people they just start out, they do some stuff on it and they get and don't get the reactions that they were hoping for and they say, oh no, it, it's not for me. And, they, right. and it's, a, it's a pity really because if you hang in and you do it, what I explain in the course, and you do that for a couple of months, and that's all it takes, really, you will see an enormous success, and it's guaranteed. Hmm. Uh, I get offers or um, requests, inquiries through LinkedIn on a weekly basis, and I think Mick will also agree because he's also very active on, uh, on LinkedIn, um, and it's working really well. That's awesome. Also, like I said at the end of the of the uh, of the pr um, presentation. I will have a look at your profile if you follow the course, if you take the course. Uh, you can send me your the link to your profile. I will look at it and give you some person, personal recommendations on how to make it better. I love it. And for everyone watching the video or the replay, it is, it's almost not 50% off, but it is $57 for one week for the course which is a generous discount, but that's only for a week. So hop on it. It's normally, I think, 95. And so this is a an awesome opportunity to get your LinkedIn game going and get everything more just flowing through. It's, um, it's almost for free. <laughs> that's right. and, and so leave it before we wrap up today and everyone who's been watching thank you for joining us today thank you for interacting with us feel free to pop in the comments thank Levin for his time let us know something you learned if you're watching the replay feel free to pop in the comments as well we do come back and love to see what you what you think what you have to say but uh before we wrap up Levin, just for I'd like to ask just kind of wrap up question for the person who like kind of like me, has a LinkedIn profile, has done a little work, watched a couple YouTube videos, kind of have used the platform, but kind of not, but I'm realizing it's more valuable. Every time I go to my LinkedIn page and try and make things better or try and, you know, make connections and all of that, I kind of lose steam. It's not a platform quite like TikTok or something that just like, addicts you into it so do you have a little advice on just like whether it's setting some time out of the day or just a certain a good place to start a little advice for keeping that steam and keeping the motivation in the to make that use of the platform really okay well i think the biggest motivation is to see that it works 
and that you actually uh, get some really interesting inquiries or people asking you for uh, help mm -hmm. and asking for your product or your service. Mm -hmm. And when you see that happening, then of course you see, wow, right. what I'm doing here has effect. It really helps me. So for me, that is my uh, uh, biggest motivator to keep doing it and to keep, you know, being like two, three times a week, um, looking at uh, at that platform, looking at the content and sharing some information, sharing some some content and doing those advanced searches. Um, and in fact, um, you don't have to spend a lot of time on it. Um, once you have your profile built, once you have your network built, that's the hard work. And right. I say uh, like it will maybe take your a couple of months. But after that, only 10 minutes a day is enough to just have the results keep rolling in. So uh, that's also a, a big advantage of it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. That once, I'm sure once, yeah, once the positive feedback loop comes in, the motivation. Also, it's a good motivator because money is definitely a motivator to me. So once those things... <laughs> money and appreciation from your yeah. target group. Yeah. yeah, it makes a big difference. Well, thank you so much, Levin, for your time. We appreciate you so much for sharing your expertise and these little tips. And we hope to have you back again for everyone watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the to the Discover YouTube channel. We're trying to bring more creators and educators like Levin here to share their expertise and make us all a smarter, wiser community. Levin, appreciate you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone, for watching. All right. Bye.